Well, hello, everybody. Good evening. And again, we are very sorry for the difficulties that we've been having. Uh, we hope you stuck around and uh, will be able to enjoy the, the program tonight. We do have a good program for you. We want to welcome you to our Facebook Live, and we have a great show. And tonight what we're going to be looking at is uh, we have a great couple of segments for you. Uh, here in just a little bit, Our my, my sidekick, Kaylee, is going to be joining in with us. And uh, But for the sake of time, we've had them sitting here visiting with this for quite some time ready to go so instead of uh, talking about some other things we'll get back to the three things you should know and all that uh, here in just a few moments but we really have a, a, a great couple of guests with us here uh, tonight we know you're going to be looking forward to it we've started a new segment called uh, where are they now and so uh, we're ready to start that so John let's go right into where are they now Well, hello there. <laughs> I, think, I think we're finally live. I want to introduce everybody here tonight, uh, Jamie and Tracy Powell. And Jamie, Pastor Jamie was a former pastor here at uh, First Baptist West before I came. And so we wanted to catch up with you guys and, and welcome to our program. Sorry you've had to wait so long to, to get on, but man, live television, you kind of know what it's like, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah we've all so, had to get to being on TV now. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I've actually been on TV more than I ever dreamed I would, uh, doing all the little videos and different things that we're doing. But we're it's great to see you. I know we got to visit just a few moments before we tried to get this program going, uh, but just wanted to see how you guys are doing. We're doing doing actually well, and um, uh, uh, lost a little bit more of my hair, but other than that, um, we're doing great, you know. So, good. Uh, good. <laughs> so good health and everything. So. So how's your family doing? Doing great. You want to say something about the kids? Or? Um, Katie and our daughter, Katie, and her and her husband, Andrew, and their son were just with us for a week. Um, he's uh, Elijah is two and a half now and talking nonstop. So oh, they're a lot of fun. And they're living in um, Arizona. And he's pastoring there. Our son-in-law is pastoring there. And then mm -hmm. our son uh caleb is living in utah he's um building he's a welder and he's building metal fences in utah so and in fact him and they started their own company called southern point fencing and uh so that's what they do oh awesome so they're, they're not anywhere near you guys then huh i'm afraid not so, <laughs> yeah caleb's, caleb's a 34 hour drive and katie is about 28 hour drive from here my goodness yeah. so they're doing well though yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, they, they they were quite small whenever you guys were here, right? Uh, Katie graduated high school there. At um, oh, okay. Yeah, from Lawton Christian. And Caleb was in the fifth grade when we moved. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, you, you were here. For, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, when we moved to Lawton, uh, Katie was starting the um, third, grade. third grade. And then oh, we adopted wow. Caleb um about uh, four months after we moved to Lawton. okay all right so she basically grew up here in the church right yeah mm -hmm. yeah well great so, so, until he was 11 yeah oh okay all right so you guys were here for how long at first baptist west there 10 years 10 years wow yeah. And I, I imagine it was 10 good years. If, if, if you've enjoyed it like I enjoyed here. Right, yeah. here. It was 10 good years. Um, uh, people always ask me, uh, uh, do you like serving in the ministry? I say, most days I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand that one. Yeah, I understand yeah. that one. Hey, I, I, I was telling you the other day, West, no. <laughs> I was telling you the other day uh, when we were talking about this and you, you agreed to come on that uh, I, I know you're still in good standing around here. Because, as I said, that people still refer to you as uh, Brother Jamie rather than the former pastor. Yeah, the guy that used to be here, the guy before the, this pastor. So, <laughs> so as long as you and I both have names here, they That's refer to us with names. We're, we're, we're doing well. We're doing yeah. well. In fact, so, I was bragging on the church um, uh, <clears throat> the other day to people, you know, because there's I know a couple of churches in our area that in the 10 and a half years I've been here, they're looking for either their fourth or their fifth pastor. And uh, I thought about First West that, you know, um, 
Uh, my mind just went blank, but uh, I had a pastor there. It was like 15 years or so. I was there 10. You're there, what, nine and a half or so now. Yeah. And, and, um, and that speaks well of the church. Absolutely. Well, you know, one thing, uh, Brother Jamie, is what I told them when I came in view of a call. I said, now, look, before you decide this, you, you need to know that I, I don't come and go very quickly. So <laughs> you really got to want me here because I want to come. I'm, yeah. It's going to be hard to get rid of them. So yeah. uh, they I devoted me in. I knew you had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I told him, I said, but, yeah. So with you been here 10 years prior, I thought, well, my, I, I'd be in pretty good shape to be able to stick around because they don't get, they don't change pastors very quickly. That's so. good. Yeah. So well, that's uh, uh, of course, now, the only, the only thing that, that, that I, I wish would have been differently was that you would have built this building before I came. <laughs> well, we planned for it. We, we did it kind of like David. Now, David planned it, and you get to build it, Solomon. <laughs> and, and all I can do is say, thank you, brother. Thank yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. I told him, I said, man, it would have been a whole lot easier to cut the ribbon than it would have yeah. be to dig the first shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. You, you had a great ministry here, and you set things up very well. And, and I appreciate all that you did to allow me to come in and, and have a great ministry because I know, uh, quite frankly, that if you hadn't done a great job, then it would have been very difficult for me to have a good ministry because that's just the, 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 the way it works. So I thank both of you for the effect that you've had on First Baptist West. And, and I was just real excited to have you both back on. So how, how are things different? So you moved and you've been at Georgia now for, what, 10 and a half? Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 It's um, um, obviously each church is, has its unique uh, history and so forth. Uh, uh, what, uh, First West was started, what, in like 1954 or something like that. Um, First Baptist Perry, Georgia was started in 1838. So wow. we're over, what, uh, was that, 80, 182 years old. And, um, and so um, I've got a couple of charter members still. <laughs> Uh, in our church, and uh, it's, uh, no, it's had a had a long, a long, long history, and um, and a and a, a good history, like other like every church. You know, there's some some wonderful chapters, and there's some um, some sad chapters in its history, but uh, uh, there've been a lot of great ch uh, chapters. Uh, uh, in 182 years, the church has started, uh, I think, five churches intentionally. Um, probably three unintentionally, but, um, um, but uh, it happens, you know, but, um, but uh, they've, they've uh, you know, um, uh, they've been, it's a first Baptist church in a county seat town. And um, it's um, been, um, had a lot of a rich history and stuff. A lot of good, a lot of good folks have come and gone here. I know the 10 years we've been here, uh, about 35% of our church are senior adults. And so we've had probably, in 10 years that uh, we average anywhere probably from uh, 12 to 20 funerals a year so we've we've had a lot of good folks uh, a lot of godly people that have uh, gone on to heaven that uh, probably at what 140 150 funerals i guess since we've been here and uh, wow. so that's, that's wow. different you know first west uh well, at least during the time we were there tended to be a uh on the demographic so a younger congregation you know a lot of military and so forth and and so we had some dear saints there that died, but um, it was just a different, uh, culturally it's different. I'll just tell you, you know, one of the things that was refreshing about First West is um, we had people from um, uh, various uh, uh, cultures and countries and, and stuff and uh, uh, the way heaven's supposed to look like. And so that was refreshing, you know, and uh, it's a little more challenging moving back to the deep South, but we've, uh, we got people that love God and love people as well. And we're grateful uh, for them, but it's, it's a different, you know, it's, um, you know, different history and some cultural things we have to deal with sometimes. Right. Right. I, I can understand. And that's one of the things I was going to ask Tracy, how do you see difference between pastoring in Oklahoma as you do in, in Georgia? Yeah, it's it was kind of a culture shock because I'm from Oklahoma, so I, right. you know, okay. and um, it's it's a different it is different, very different down here. It's it's good, but there's a lot of traditional things that go on here that some things I didn't even know about. You know, just different. I, I don't know, but uh, it's been good. It's a it's a nice little town. Perry's a, a good town, and. Um, and it's been good. It took a little bit of a transition, I, I will say that, because it's just, um, 
I don't even know, really know how to explain how different it is. It's just, it's just right. not the same. <laughs> I, I grew up in the South and she grew up in the West there, so. Oh, okay. So, so you're a little more accustomed to some of the stuff that went oh, yeah. on. But Perry is much like the town I grew up in Arkansas. I grew up in East Arkansas in a town the same size and uh, same kind of, uh, a, a lot of the same kind of things that uh, we have seen here, a lot of agriculture. We're in a high ag agriculture area. Um, uh -huh. And um, uh, wonderful, beautiful accents. They're, they love bacon here. <laughs> oh, God bless them. And uh, they're not afraid. Uh, you can't be a skinny preacher in middle Georgia. Um, <laughs> when, when they're erecting first, a statue to Paula Dean in our courtyard. Um, <laughs> when we first uh, came here, um, some of the accents I, I couldn't. Our one, uh, our one of our secretaries, I couldn't understand what she was saying. I mean, <laughs> she had such a, uh, you know, an accent, a southern accent. I, I could, I had to have her write down words because I didn't know what she was saying. <laughs> I'm like, am I, am I still in America? Because I don't understand you people. <laughs> Right. Well, right. Has, has, north of Macon, which is 30 miles, you're a Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> we got real southern. Well, has, has anyone, has anyone uh, that, that's come to you lately from family members from over here talked to you and said, man, you guys really talk differently now? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not I think sure. I talk like I always did. No, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I, I, Marshall, we understand that. That's, that's I'll tell you, I'm I've so got to have more people, honey and sweetie. Oh, yeah, and, they uh, call everybody sugar, sugar <laughs> and honey and sweetie. <laughs> Uh, that, that, you know, being from Arkansas, you, you've got an own dialect of your own, and that will never, I don't think you can ever change someone from Arkansas. But so, I so I hear myself saying words, I'm like, what? How, why did I say that? They call shopping carts buggies. Well, of course, that's not what shopping they are. Cart, that's, <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, so, so how, how have you guys been dealing with this coronavirus and all that? How, how, how's that affected you in, in your area? Sure. Um, we were already doing Facebook Live services, um, but uh, during this time, actually, we had just gone to uh, an improved, um, I mean, um, um, communication, stuff like that. We added um, a live stream to our service. We've changed our website. And then we had, a, I just, we had like about five millennial kids in their twenties that have been phenomenal. And, uh, and we bought some, some better equipment and so forth. And so really have and, uh, increased the quality of what we're able to do. I'm grateful for all the churches doing stuff. You know, um, in fact, if, if, um, more people may be tuned in to seeing us, you know, in these services and actually attend, you know, and just like y'all, I'm sure, you know, you get people from other states and even other countries, even closed countries that have tuned in to uh, services and stuff. And so that's been neat. It's just difficult. Um, uh, a lot of people would know. And at First West, I'm, I'm more people oriented and have the spiritual gift of hanging out. And so I, I love, I love being around folks and stuff, but uh, we've, we've, We've navigated it all right, but uh, I'm glad we're starting. We just opened two weeks ago, started uh, meeting again, and right. uh, but I feel like we've done, our people have been phenomenal in their giving and and really in serving a lot. You know, probably over 2,500 masks or so uh, our church members made for for different clinics and different things like that. And and so uh, uh, it's it's not been all bad. It's it, there's been a lot of good in it. Did you did you guys have a, a pretty tight lockdown there in Perry as far as uh, during the during the outbreak there was for a while i mean we we still had our church well some pe people still came uh the staff members came because we're in kind of different buildings so we're not really up next to each mm -hmm. other so we were still able to the you staff, know yeah. the staff was able to come in um and we coordinated you know some people that uh, had to stay home. We had coordinated some people to, you know, shop for them or, you know, bring stuff to them or, you know, do things for them. So, you know, we did a lot of that, but it was, it was t tight for some, some period of time, but um, we didn't have a lot of cases around here. We do have one family in our church whose adult son died from it. He lived in the oh, Atlanta area, but um, they could be with him and yeah, all that was, it was, that was, that was really tough. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it hasn't really, you know, I don't, we don't know anybody from church that necessarily has had it or, yeah. you know, anything like that. We've not had a lot of job loss or anything because we have a lot of school teachers in our church. They still been paid. We've got people that work at the uh, Air Force Base 
you know, that uh, we're still working, you know, working from home, home and so forth. And, uh, and uh, a lot of other people that have worked from home. So, but we've had a few people affected by that, but not widespread in okay. our area. And then Georgia was one of the states to open up a little, little bit more early and stuff. And so uh, things are starting to get back to normal. Okay, good. Well, uh, I know I don't want to keep you too long, but I, 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 I could told you earlier, I enjoy visiting with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what are some things, uh, as we get ready to wrap up, what are some things that either of you or both of you sense that God has been dealing with you on through this time of change that we've seen through the church? That may be something that you could encourage somebody with that God's been showing both of you. So you, if you either one of you or both of you want to share uh, something that might just testify what God's done for you through this time. Well, certainly I think that um, we should have a greater appreciation for being together, you know, physically. There's something about that that's is important. Uh, I'm grateful that, uh, and, and I think it's been a time to remember that sometimes just picking up the phone and calling somebody means a lot. And I've been real proud. Our, our Sunday school teachers have done great keeping in contact with their people. Um, we've got a senior adult pastor and a pastoral care uh, pastor that um, they call all the senior adults every week, you know, and, oh, okay. uh, and, and all of us, myself, you know, call different ones and just uh, let them know we're thinking about them, praying about them, che uh, checking them. And uh, it just means a lot. It continues to, you know, deepen our relationships when we can't be physically present. Um, and, um, and it's just so important. Uh, the whole Bible is about relationships, you know, with God and with people. And um, and so we just got to continue to do that. And, and just people need encouragement. They really do. Amen. Tracy, what about you? What has God shown you through this? And I think one of the things, and I kind of shared this with Wit when I was that last month or whenever I did, mm -hmm. <laughs> did the Wit meeting. Um, but, Ask Jim um, Peterson. He came to it. Yeah. That, um, <laughs> the, I noticed Ed was watching. That the Lord... Um, <laughs> Just really showed me again that he is in control even when it seems like he's not and you know even if I'm under the illusion that I'm in control I'm not <laughs> but yeah. but the Lord is in control and he um, is gonna bring something good out of out of what you know being alone or being you know isolated for a time he can he really used it I know to speak to me I started out the year kind of doing a study on God is a stronghold and little did I know how much I would need that that thought and that that scripture that he is a place to run to in times of trouble and um, in times of uh, when you're scared that he's there and and he's proved that to me over and over again even during this and you know I was talking with my friend I, I don't feel like I was affected by it in the way that so many other people were I mean I still came to work and you know it was just two of us at home anyway so it you know I mean we didn't do as many things for sure we stayed home a lot more but um but I felt like you know it was so kind of scary and and just um it, it really takes a toll on you even if you're not really you know you didn't lose your job or you didn't whatever so I thought you know it'd be so much worse for people who did but but the fact that the Lord is there and he's ready and willing to, um, you know, to comfort us and to give us peace and to give us, um, you know, just a, a sense of his strength and when we're weak. And that's that's really what he sort of reiterated, I guess, in my life through all of this and is continuing to. But and, and I would add too, you know, we've seen, you know, whether it's the pan pandemic or um, the um, um uh, the things that are currently going on in terms of race relations and and um, and um, and people's response to that and so forth. It just reminds us over and over how desperately people need the Lord. They're looking for solutions everywhere. They're looking for it politically, uh, medically, um, um, you know, um, and culturally. And I mean, just looking at everything and thinking, you know, okay, uh, uh, there's the Bible says in Proverbs, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the ends are the ways of death. And it just reminds us how much people are in desperate need of the gospel, because the gospel, uh, particularly as it comes to relations between people in our nation and, and the world and so forth, and from different cultures and so forth, is um, uh, uh, the gospel reconciles us to God and to people, you know, and the gospel 
of Christ is good news for our bad news, you know, and 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 all the fears that people have, and we uh, people need the Lord, and and so I hope that as we're coming back together again, that we're uh, engaging or re-engaging afresh in getting the gospel to people. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Listen, I, I, I want to thank you both again for being very patient with us tonight. Uh, things just kind of went a little haywire, but uh, we I do appreciate both of you. It's been fun to visit with you, to catch up with you. And I know our people uh, are going to really, they've enjoyed having you and getting to see you again. I know uh, Tracy, we had a lot of good comments from the wit that you did. My wife was there, and and she was mm-hmm. talking about how how much she enjoyed uh, hearing you talk. And and uh, so thank you for what you're doing now. But I also want to again personally thank you for the ministry you had here that you set up some a good foundation uh, for me to follow. And God has really been able to uh, do some great work. And I know it's not just because of me; it was because of things that you've done and the, the mindset that, of the people. So I, I thank you guys. I love you both. And I don't really I have not really, I've met you a couple of times, right. but uh, you, you will always be in my heart and uh, well, thank uh, you. tough following you up, but, uh, but, but you, you've done a great job. Can I take a minute and pray over y'all before we close out? It'd be great. Okay. It'd be great. Father in Jesus name, we come to you and, and God, we thank you for your love and your grace and God, thank you. Uh, for your watch care in all ways. And God, I, I thank you for uh, Pastor Jamie and Tracy. And God, I pray that you would just uh, continue to show favor on them and the ministry that they have there at First Baptist Perry. And, and God, that you could strengthen their bodies and their spirits. And that God, you would use them in a great way, as Pastor Jamie said, to, to present the good news in the middle of all this bad news. And that, God, we could see their ministry flourish and reaching people for Jesus. We pray for their son and, and his family, for the, their daughter and her family. That, God, you would just bless them in a great way as well. And, God, we, again, thank you for the union that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for the ministry they had here at First Baptist West uh, to proceed the, the ministry that you have allowed me to do. And, God, I thank you for both of them. And again, we just uh, ask your favor on them for their strength and for their well-being and for their spiritual growth. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you you guys again so much. And uh, we'll be be catching up with you a a little bit later, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. All right. Looking forward to seeing talking to you again. All right. God bless y'all. God bless you. All right. Hey, that was, that was a lot of fun catching up with Pastor Jamie. And, and I want to bring in now uh, my sidekick, uh, Kaylee. And I uh, want to bring a note about this is that uh, ever since Kaylee's joined our program, well, we've, had, we've struggled. But she, she had, tell them why you, why you think we're struggling with the video so much. Um, I, much. I don't think it's me, <laughs> but my personality just might be too much for Facebook. So it's <laughs> that, that, hard. <laughs> And that may be it. That may be it. So, Kelly, thank you for being here and being my sidekick tonight. Co-host, John. Oh, <laughs> there you go. All right, John, got it. So, how, how have things been going for you, Kaylee? Um, It's been going pretty well. Um, life's been a little busy. Busy. I understand you had family in this week. Yes. Um, my sister and her two kids came, and then my sister-in-law brought her two kids as well. So, it was a very full house. Kind of loud. Yes, yes. Uh, I got a new piano, and I had both on both sides. There would be a little kid banging on the piano, and it was it was real interesting. Yeah. So so how how's it now? It's so quiet. Oh oh, they've all gone. <laughs> yes. Um, I think Brittany she left Tuesday. So and okay. my sister left on sa- Sunday. So oh okay. It's so, so quiet. <laughs> kind of kind of peaceful around your house yes. again. Now you can play yes. the piano and yes, play it right. I can practice without kids banging on the two sides. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I'm glad you had a good weekend, and I'm and, glad you're here. And you had a busy, re- busy yeah. weekend, right? Yeah, it was. I call it the marathon weekend. Mm-hmm. And I, I, we drove from here on Thursday to do a wedding in Dallas on Friday. I left Friday late night and drove to Tulsa, uh, which was about a four-hour drive uh, for graduation. 
uh, for my niece on Saturday morning, uh, then did a big party celebration for her all that afternoon, and uh, then went and did some things with my brother, then uh, drove home on Sunday, another four hours. So, uh, yeah, we had, we had a lot of driving going on. So, anyway, it, it was busy. And I found, I'm finding out I'm not as young as I used to be, so that recovery <laughs> time, it takes a little longer <laughs> well, I hate driving too, so. I'm yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it's been a good weekend. Glad glad to have you here with us and we're having a good time. Uh, one of the things that I, I got thinking is things are crazy and uh, mm -hmm. we've had a weird 2020. And, yes. And uh, I got to thinking, what would it be like if we've been through it, but what would it be like if you came into it and just went, <laughs> here it is. So I, I found this little short video from a guy that's one of my daughter's friends. And this is the second video that we've shown here. So John, let's see what it would be like if you walked into 2020. Thank God we found you, dude. You're free. What, what did I miss? Well, Australia was burning there for a while. Iran launched some missiles. Kobe died in a helicopter crash. There was a, a pandemic that shut the whole world down. No, no, no. And then there's the rioting and the looting. So, so as you see, walking into it, be going like, okay, no, I'm going I'll go back. back. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want to do that anymore. All right. So what we want to do, let's just real quick, jump right into the three things that you should know. So the first thing that, that you should know about here at First Baptist West is that, folks, we are starting back. We have started our services back. We're open. It's an exciting time. We've had uh, a, three weeks, I believe, of church. And, man, it's been fun having people there. And we want to encourage you to come and be a part of us uh, this Sunday morning. Uh, it's, and I know with, for Kaylee and them, it's been fun having people in church, yes, right? Yes, it has been so great to have people. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a whole a whole different ballgame, isn't it? Yes. So, so different. So we're, we're glad you're back. But what we wanted to let you know is that we are uh, starting our preschool nursery uh, back this Sunday morning. What we're trying to do is open up slowly some things in a progression. So we want to let you know that our preschool nursery will be opened up this weekend. But now what we're going to do is we're only going to do it for the 1045 service. We're not going to have it during both times because it's a lot of stuff to have to do in between if we if we had both times. So we want to encourage our young families with, with kids, come on back and uh, uh, we're going to start this Sunday. Now there's going to be a few different things that we're going to be doing and starting tomorrow, we're going to post a video and some instructions on how we're going to bring people in. It's just not going to be able to walk in and drop your kid off like we used to uh, because we have to do some things different. Now we're going to also have Children's Church is going to be starting back up here in just a few weeks. We'll talk to Carrie later on about our, our kids, uh, Children's Church. And also um, we're beginning to sit down and make plans for bringing Sunday School back. People are beginning to ask when can we have our classes here at the church. And so uh, we're beginning to work those out. But uh, folks, we're open. We want to invite you to come and join us live and uh, listen to our praise team, join in celebration with them, and uh, then have a great time of worship together. So that's uh, the first thing. Uh, number two, number two is celebrate freedom. We are going to have our celebrate freedom on the, uh, the 28th. Now, it's not going to be like our big Celebrate Freedom we've had over the last couple of years. And I know you've enjoyed the, the car show. We've had a lot of different things going on, haven't we? Yes, I, I enjoy the cars and the food and the music. <laughs> yeah, so we have all that. But so we're going to uh, bring and do it differently this year because of the virus. We're not going to be able to have the big thing. But I, I don't want to look at it as a letdown that we're discouraged. I want to look at it as it's just a change. For this year, we're going to do things differently. We are going to have two services this year, again, because we can't put that many people into mm -hmm. our sanctuary at one time. So uh, we will be having a, a special service. We're going to have some special things going on that we normally wouldn't do on a Sunday morning. I uh, want to let everybody know that 
uh, we are going to be having our uh, service roll call. Now, what that is, if you're not um, haven't been here before, is in the part of our service we honor all of our guys who uh, have are serving or have served in the military. So we want to encourage you that if you're connected to First Baptist West and you haven't uh, gotten the information to us, what we need is for you to contact the office uh, to give us information about your service, where you served, when you served, your rankings. All of that, and if you're if you're still active duty, we want to celebrate that as well. But we're going to have a great time on Celebrate Freedom, so uh, we want to encourage you to come on the 28th. We're going to have a great, great time. It's going to be different. It's not going to be a letdown. It's going to be different, okay? So that's number two. Number three, summer activities. I'm so excited. <laughs> summer is here, <laughs> folks. It's officially, whether coronavirus stopped us or not, summer is officially here. School had been out. So here we are. We're in our summer activities. There's a couple things that we want to just quickly talk to you about. The first one of the summer activities is our, um, is our youth retreat coming up on July 8th, 9th, and 10th. So you're going to that, right? Yes. And uh, Keith and I will be the in cabin band for a couple days there you go so you're going to sing with us again so kaylee and them will be there i'm, I'm going it's going to be not be falls creek it's going to be a little bit different no. but i think john has done a great job uh getting us a good place to be to serve as a matter of fact we got a plan kaylee uh we'll be down there on wednesday night yes and so we got to thinking about what about our facebook live yeah we'll do an in cabin facebook live for everybody to see what the youth are learning and yeah to have some fun. So what you'll basically do is uh, they're going to get to tune in on one of our worship times too. Yes. So on that Wednesday night on the, the on uh, the eighth, July eighth, don't not join us because we will be live. Kaylee and I'll be there. Uh, we'll be I'll be hosting it. She'll be sidekicking it all the way. Hosting it. Okay. Co <laughs> okay. But we'll both be there. We'll start the show. We'll have some of our regular things, and then they'll get yes. to join in with you. <laughs> And Keith and the, and the band as we worship. And John, I think, is probably going to be speaking. So you'll get to hear John. Uh, and I know you'll be blessed. And you'll get to see some things that are going on. So to all the students, man, we need you to, to sign up uh, to, um, to our youth retreat, okay? And call the office or come by. Contact John. He'll be, he'll be delivering forms if you need it. Just let us know because we, we need to uh, get signed up for that. So the youth retreat is number one on that. The second thing that we're going to look at with this is Vacation Bible School. Um, it's coming. We, we're going to do it on July 19th through the 23rd. As of right now, we're planning to do it regular style, uh, but we're going to be deciding that in the next few weeks. Carrie's going to be on here in just a few minutes, and we're going to talk a little more about it. So, but Vacation Bible School began to make plans for the 19th through the 23rd of July. And the third thing that I want to bring up is one of my favorite things too, is it's, it's our sports camp. We are going to be having our sports camp again this year. Uh, done one now for about six years, I yeah. guess. Uh, done, done them for several years. Uh, we're, we're growing it, we're changing it, but that's going to be happening on July 27th, 28th, and 29th. That's going to be in the morning. So uh, we're going to have a great time uh, with that. So we want you to begin to, uh, we'll have registration online uh, here in the next few weeks, but we want you to go ahead and, and have an idea that we are going to be doing our uh, sports camp uh, coming up very quickly at the, end of, of, at the end of July before school starts back. So folks, those are the three things uh, that you should know. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break and uh, then we're going to come back with our Bible study. And, uh, but thank you again for sticking around with us tonight. Let's go to commercial. 2020 was a rough year for First Baptist West. We've had to cancel our worship services. That included no more hearing of the word in person. And one of the hardest difficulties we face so far, which is canceling time of fellowship to enjoy one another's company. And the small ray of light that was False Creek has also been put out. But there is a new light of hope. There is our summer camp of 2020. First Baptist West students will be able to enjoy a time of fellowship, relaxation, and worship in this beautiful cabin. Ooh, look at those nice rooms and nice patio all out in their woods. 
Now join with me as we meet together July 8th through the 10th for a fantastic voyage into the great outdoors of Broken Bow, Oklahoma. The cost will be $70 per person. That'll provide you for your meals while we're in the cabins. That'll provide your cabin fee. And that'll also provide you a beautiful t-shirt designed by yours truly. However, on the way up and the way down, you'll need to bring money or at least a packed lunch. And dinner on the way home will not be provided. Well, I guess it will be provided, but if you want to eat out, you'll have to bring your own money. Registration will be coming shortly. Stay updated. Stay tuned. Okay, everyone, we're going to get back to our program here in just a few moments, but uh, I wanted to take a, a, some time here to share from the Word of God. As I shared with you last week, this is actually my favorite time uh, of the program. I enjoy visiting with people and interviewing and talking to you about other things, but man, I really love getting into the Word of God. And so uh, I, I thank you for sticking with us during this time. What I want to talk about tonight is something that really is happening in our society today. You know, there's a lot of talking going on, a lot of words being spoken. And uh, sometimes, as I even shared last week, we, we get to wondering who it is that we even listen to. How do we, how do we know what to listen to? Uh, and one thing that I wanted to share tonight is about the, the word spoken by the Christian or the word spoken by uh, the church, that we as the church shouldn't just be adding to the noise. You know, there's a term called white noise, and what that white noise is is that people uh, sometimes even use it in the it's background noise. It's just stuff people don't really pay attention to. It's just there, and I think that's what's going on a lot in our society today is the idea of just noise and and distinguishing what is truth. And so, what I want to do tonight is I wanted to talk to you about the church. I want to talk to you about we as Christians, what it is that we're supposed to be saying and how using our words. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, the apostle Paul is asking for prayer from the church at Ephesus. And listen to what he asked for. He says, and for me, he's asking and pray and for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The apostle Paul here is saying, pray for me that the words I speak will be the words that lead people to the gospel. And that's where we need to be. Because you know one thing I found out is it's easy to open our mouths. It's really open uh, to open our mouths. It's easy just to start spouting off stuff. Because you know one thing I found out is everyone has an opinion. And sometimes those opinions mean something, sometimes they don't. But e it's, easy to, it's easy to spout off. Paul's saying, I don't want to do that. And we as the church shouldn't want to do that. As a matter of fact, the book of Psalm 18, verse 2 says, A fool has, no, de has delight, no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. In other words, he says, a foolish person loves to hear themselves speak. They don't want to listen. They don't want to hear from somebody else. They just want to speak and share his own heart. Now, one thing I found out is the lack of knowledge or understanding of a certain subject doesn't keep people from talking about it. As a matter of fact, Christopher Shaw wrote this. He said, eloquent words can easily disguise one's ignorance. So we can sometimes uh, state opinions that I believe that exceed our intelligence, that we just, again, like to talk. So what do, what do we as Christians do? So the second thing I want to look at is as Christians, we should use our words for a purpose. Now, what, what is that purpose? Paul states it very clearly right here. He says that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. In other words, it's to please God. Everything that we talk about as Christians out in this world, when we, when we begin to give our opinions, it shouldn't be our opinion. We should be stating fact that leads people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 19, 14, he says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let my words be pleasing to you, God. And so when we're talking about anything that's in this world, we talk it and, 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 and we want God to be pleased by it. And so what do we do to please God with our words? By revealing the mystery of the gospel to people. That's what we ought to be stating. That's what we ought to be telling. Because one thing that I found out is that people don't need to know what I think about something. They'll need to know what I feel. 
uh, from, from the pulpit. They don't need to know what I'm thinking about certain issues. Everything that we say should be leading people back to the gospel. That's pleasing to God. Because why? Because the gospel are words of life. Jesus has the words of life to us. He has the words of life to the world. He has the words of life to any situation. And so, my friends, let us not be caught up in all the stuff. Let us not get caught up and be pulled into um, the, these useless debates that are going on and get caught up in those things. Let us focus on the truth from the Word of God, and then we won't be part of the noise. We'll be part of, of the refreshment, because the Word of God brings freshening to the spirit. It brings a peace to the soul. And so today, tonight, tomorrow, let's keep focused on what we're saying so that we can know that we're leading people to Christ, that we're pointing them to Jesus, not just saying what we think. Because again, my friend, what we think doesn't matter. What God thinks, what God has situated us in, that's what truly matters. So we have the words of life. Let's not be white noise. Let's be something significant. Let me pray with you. And I want you to pray for me as well, the same thing that Paul asked here. Pray that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. And I'll do that for you as well. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings. God, we thank you for your word and for the meaning that it has to life. And Father, I pray for the situation in our country today. I pray, Father, for the political landscape. I pray for the social landscape. And Father, I pray that you would just bring a peace to people. God, you'd bring a settled spirit. And Lord, that you would use me and you would use other Christians to speak truth, but not truth as we see it, not truth as anyone else sees it, but truth from your word. So Father, tonight, Give us boldness. Give us a heart for you. Give us a heart for people. That everything that we say would be an encouragement to people. It would be uplifting. And that, Father, it would point them to you. Father, continue to use us, First Baptist West, and other churches, and Lawton, and in 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 our nation, and even in our world, to be different. To speak differently. And to have a different message. And it's a message of life. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for, for listening to the word tonight. And I'm excited about what we have coming up next. So let's go ahead and return back to our program. All right, and I was able to rush from the sanctuary back to here all in that millisecond. <laughs> but uh, no, anyway, uh, th uh, thank you for uh, staying with us, and we're looking forward to the rest of our show here. Uh, as you see, we our, our next guest that we have is Carrie Scales. She's our children's minister Hi. here at First Baptist West. And uh, Carrie, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. I'm doing Been good. busy? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, she, she's been really working and, and keeping things going. So I wanted to bring Carrie on tonight uh, because we have a lot of uh, good things going on for the summer. Uh, and I, I wanted her to kind of give a quick synopsis of what some things we're looking at. Now, you started today with something, right? Yeah, today we have a quick pickup game, I guess. I don't know. Do yeah. you call it pickup games with uh, Gaga Ball? So we just um, jumped in the Gaga pit and had some fun, and it was fun. So. And, and and the thing is, I, I, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Because someone had mentioned something about the Gaga pit today, and I said, well, when are they doing that? And somebody said, well, they just finished up. Well, it was warm, so we started early. Yeah, it, right. we So we will probably do a few of those in the next few weeks. And, right and stuff so okay well, you good. and i can have our camp rematch yeah here yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and kaylee kaylee has a real job so she doesn't get to join us in the mornings no, no, so no. uh but I, she, she'd probably play gaga ball with us too yeah. so yes. um real quick uh this next week you have i know you have something special starting next week that you would like to mention yeah next week we're trying to get our kids back together a little bit and, uh -huh. and so next week we're gonna have our um, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders um, are we're going to do a craft night on um, third on Tuesday, mm 
Okay. And then on Thursday, before WIT starts, um, we're going to do um, the kindergarten, first and second grade. Okay. So, and then we're just going to do some crafts and simple things that last about an hour. And that'll be here at the church. It'll be for here at the, the church. Yeah. And you're splitting them up. Say that again. On Tuesday? Tuesday is going to be our older kids, so third through sixth grade. Okay. And then younger kids are going to be on. No, uh, vice versa. Our older kids are first. We want to do them right. on Tuesday, and Thursday is going to be our younger kids. Okay, and they'll so. do crafts. All they need to do is come. They just need you to show up. We everything got everything ready. already. It's good, ready to go. So. Right, and so we'd encourage you, if, if you're watching tonight uh, or watching the replay that we'll post here in just a little while, uh, and you know some kids, I mean, help us get the word out yeah. to, to get as many kids. We're One of the things is, we're again, as she said, we're trying to get our students kids back together yeah. and in, in small ways to eventually build up. Okay, so what about the summer? Um, well, we still have VBS coming up. And so um, if you were on our, v our VBS team before, you can be expecting a phone call that uh, just wants to know, I just want to know if you want to be a part of our VBS still and how you want to be a part of it. Um, and so you can be expecting that. And if you were not on our team, please get a hold of me so that, that I can give you a call. Okay. Um, and, and we will work on putting you in the right place. So. Now, it, it, is, it is going to be the same time as what we have scheduled. And that is uh, July 19th through the 23rd. Correct. So now, one of the things that Carrie and I are going to be discussing over the next few days is what is Vacation Bible School going to do? Going to, to look, look like. like, yeah. So uh, be praying for us as we make those decisions because yes. um, we want it to be as good as it can be. Right. So, so we do want everyone to mark the dates. The dates yes, are the set. dates are important that you mark yes. them down. So, yes. Yeah. So mark down July nineteenth uh, through the twenty third. That's a Sunday night through Thursday. Right. Uh, so those folks, those dates are set. What's not set is the format. Right. Uh, we could have it here at the church as regular vacation Bible school. Yep. Uh, we could have it broken up into a virtual Bible school mm -hmm. and different things, or we could do, uh, we've been talking backyard Bible clubs, yep. breaking it up in that way that we still provide the material yep. like we would that just will break it down. So that is coming up. So we want to make sure they they stay with that date and please call us. If you'd be interested in any way to help us in vacation Bible school, uh, and we need teachers. And yes, I need people that want to help decorate. I need people that want to um, just like do some of the setup mm -hmm. um, as far as distributing supplies and all that. Um, there's lots of ways that you can help. And so it's not just merely being in a classroom with kids. We have other things that they can do too. So. Okay, very good. And then we, we have people who just help get kids from one place to another, just yep. everything. So if you just want to be a part of Vacation Bible School, we really need need them right. to, to contact us here at the church or contact you, and then we'll, we'll get the schedule set up. Right. Uh, as far as other things for the summer, what, what is it, what's it looking like for you? Um, we have the sports camp coming up. So really, yeah. we between um, next week and our Vacation Bible School, there's two or three weeks there. Um, I've been wait trying to set up some activities that will give kids the opportunity to challenge themselves, um, but it's a little bit difficult in the atmosphere that we're in. So yeah. that's kind of why some of the things haven't been published out um, is because they're still real tentative at this right. point. Right. Um, so just try to be a little bit patient. I'm trying to get as much on the calendar as I can. Right. Um, most of them will probably be on a Tuesday or a Thursday. So. Okay. And and so they'll be able to go to the web, web page yeah. and also Facebook and page, Facebook. Yep. all that to get the date. So be, be alert, be aware that we are trying to get some things going. Uh, but as she said, be patient because yeah. it's it's not normal. Anymore. No, it's not normal. Yeah, and I don't want it, and, and I I refuse <laughs> I refuse to use the term the new normal. Mm -hmm. This is not what I want to be normal. <laughs> exactly. So we will find new ways to do things, but this is not going to be our normal. One of the things that they can do um, is um, we have. Um, found that in, in in how we're doing things right now, we do need more volunteers than we normally do. I mean, okay. we, you know, with our services, we've needed more volunteers with different things like that. And so um, if you um, 
are able to and can help me with some things, if you have some ideas or anything like that, please give me a call. Right. Okay. And, you know, someone inevitably, I have people ask me, is there something for me to do at First Baptist West to help out? And the answer to that is always, yes, yeah, always. So <laughs> please, always if, if you want to help us in any way with our ministries, with our children's ministries, and we are looking back uh, at starting up Sunday school again right. over in sometime maybe near the end of July. Yes, uh, and I already know I need Sunday school teachers. So I have quite a few spots of, for Sunday school teachers that are open. So if you want to help in Sunday school, I can use that too. Right. Um, and so and we're getting ready to start back on Children's Church too. So. Yes. Yeah. Children's church is coming in a few weeks mm -hmm. uh, during our during our worship times. So yes, folks, there's lots of places for you to help us out. And yep. uh, if you want to be a part of a ministry, man, we we've got opportunities for you. So Carrie, I, I appreciate. I, I know things have been so different for you this year. It's been different for all of us, folks. I want you to understand uh, how important our staff is and how a great job that I've seen them all do because it. It, it's been amazing to watch and to see that how our staff has adapted to the different situations, the scenarios that, that are just being thrown at us. Things are changing almost on a daily basis, but your staff is doing a great job, and I, I'm just proud of them, and I'm honored to uh, get to, to work alongside them. Uh, I just hope you all as a church know how uh, how important they are and, and how blessed you are to have the staff that, that, that you have at First Baptist West. So uh, anything else that you'd like to share before we pray? Yeah. And let's go on to our next segment. All right. Well, let me pray over you, Carrie. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. And thank you, Father, for the opportunity uh, to serve you. And I, I lift up Carrie to you and I thank you for her commitment to our children's program. And Father, I thank you for her willingness to just try things to be different, uh, come up with new ways to minister. And Lord, as we do step into these uh, new activities, Father, I pray for Bible school. I pray for Sunday school, that God, you would provide workers, that even now you're beginning to burden people's hearts about helping out with our children's ministries. And Father, we could see uh, some great things come about it. I again, pray for Carrie's physical body. I pray for her strength for her encouraging spirit to be placed upon her, and that, God, that she could just see uh, fruit from the efforts that she has. And, God, we thank you for everything that we do, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, well, before we close up tonight, uh, we do have another segment that we're going to look at very quickly. Uh, the last couple of weeks we did uh, uh, Ask the Pastor, and we have some more questions. And so, John, let's roll that and Kaylee can get ready to ask some more questions. And as you see, we switch places. So Kaylee, take it, hon. Take it from here. All right. So we had a couple of people um, submit some questions. Um, we'll go with our first one. Which disciple is your favorite and why? <laughs> My favorite disciple uh, is Paul. And uh, one of the reasons that I, 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 I choose Paul is I, I want to always pattern my life after Paul uh, because of his, his burning passion. Uh, the things that he he was willing to suffer, and all of them did, but you know so much of what Paul did and his boldness and how he, uh, I mean, he, he just didn't let up. And so I've always admired Paul for that. Uh, you know, he did some things that were, you know, uh, kind of rubbed people <laughs> wrong. But uh, no, Paul, I think, would probably be my favorite. Okay. Um, the next ones are more kind of about your personal life. Okay. Um, and the first one is, how did you meet Miss Martha? <laughs> That's a really funny story. Now, my wife doesn't really like like me telling it, but I'm going to anyway because someone asked and they wanted to know. Uh, <laughs> if you ask me when we met and you ask my wife when we met, it's two different stories. Mm -hmm. We actually met, for sure, at Falls Creek. Uh, between my sophomore year in college and my junior year of college, I had just graduated from Connors. Uh, went to Falls Creek with Shelter First Baptist Church, like I'd always done every year. And one of my, my good friend, Randall Christie, uh, who was a member of First uh, Shelter, was there at Falls Creek with me. Well, his girlfriend at the time, his wife now, Susie, came to see us one night. 
and she brought a, a girl with her, and it was Martha. And so we met at Falls Creek. As a matter of fact, we even sat beside each other during one of the services. Uh, now, of course, I was very bashful, timid. <laughs> I didn't say a whole lot. I know that's hard for people to believe. So I didn't talk a whole lot, but we sat together. Uh, nothing, you know, there wasn't like we went for icy dates or anything like that. We just <laughs> met, we walked back to the cabin, everything was done, and off she left and went. Well, when I went to college, Randall and I, when I moved to East Central University, Randall and I uh, were going to be roommates. So uh, we get moved in our first day down there, and Susie comes, and Martha shows up, and I say, well, hi, how are you? She says, well, hi, I'm Martha. I said, I know who you are. She said, well, how do you know me? I said, uh, we met at Falls Creek during the summer, and I sat by you in camp. So uh, I, I, we joke about it that I left a great impact on my wife at that time. So, <laughs> But we met at Falls Creek. She'll tell you we met at East Central University. We met at Falls Creek. Okay. No lie. <laughs> I think that's a that's a man-woman thing because how Keith and I started dating, we have two di completely different stories. <laughs> so... I yeah. think it's a man and woman thing. No, this is real. I'm telling you. This, was, this <laughs> happened. This happened. I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, how long did you guys stay? <laughs> oh, boy. You should have. I, I didn't know you were going to ask that one. Uh, we dated um, for almost a year before we got married, I think. Yeah, about a year maybe. Okay. And then how Sorry, long? Sorry, <laughs> How long have you been married? 35 years. Hey, so. you can remember that yeah, one. I, oh, I better remember that one. That, that, that's, that's where my bread is buttered on that. I need to know how long we've been married. Do you know your anniversary? Uh, yes, yeah, September 14th. Look at that. My yeah. parents can't remember theirs. Yeah, well. Sorry, I, Mom. That one's Sorry, Dad. I gotta remember <laughs> so, all right, so there you go. There, there, is, that, is that all my questions? Those are all your questions for today. If you guys have any other questions for Harold, um, go ahead and send them to the Facebook page or email them to First Baptist West. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, hey, we made it through a show, Kaylee. It was <laughs> tough. John, great job, man. I, I, I know this was crazy. I always tell everybody, said, John's got the hardest job, man. We just sit on this side and look pretty, but uh, he has to actually do all the work. So, John, great job. Kaylee, great job. Carrie, thank you for coming on. And uh, again, it was great to see uh, Pastor Jamie and, and uh, have a visit with both them. And, uh, just a wonderful time and so we want to encourage you though to to join us again next week we'll we'll try to do better uh we'll try to make things a little smoother um hopefully <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe the kaylee jinx will be off by next week i'll tone my personality down just a little bit yeah bring it down to some or, or whatever because boy you're, you're you're killing facebook man hey i ended up in your chair by the end of the episode yeah. so <laughs> that, that's, that's your goal anyway now the hard part's going to be is if she ends up starting in that chair i'm going to be in trouble so but anyway well, thank you for joining us tonight hope you enjoyed our program uh, I, I know that uh, we're looking forward to Sunday morning. If you can join us live, uh, we'd love to have you here at 8.30 or 10.45 uh, for the second service. Now, remember, we're also having our preschool open for people to drop their kids off uh, at the 10.45 service. Uh, if you can't join us live, then remember, uh, live stream, uh, we'll be doing that as well in our services. So we're looking forward to that. And then join us again next Wednesday uh, here at 6.30 uh, on Facebook Live. Hopefully, again, it'll go better. We'll have a, a good show for you. We've got some good things in store. And uh, Kaylee, Kaylee, of course, will be here. Uh, she'll be joining <laughs> me every week. So, Kaylee, great job. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you. Good job. Uh, good. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. So, folks, have a great evening. God bless you. And we hope to see you Sunday morning. Good night. <laughs>